different expectations. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and then again, then the talent and bringing people together uh, as your team, as a part of your ecosystem, um, how does that work and um, how long usually people stay around you, um, if you want to share that? It's a good question. So, yeah, also another principle I've always employed is that I wanted to, for myself, have the freedom of working with whoever I want and whenever I want. And I wanted to have that for the people around me. So I didn't, I didn't want them to work with me because they would feel forced to work with me for some arbitrary reason or for some legal reason. <clears throat> and so that's why we don't have any legal contracts. So we don't have any, yeah, anything that really forces them to stay. And generally every, all work is project based. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on what kind of projects are currently active. If it's something that's more kind of internal or R and D, then there's a group of people who care about these things and play around with new ideas. If it's client projects. We have a team of individuals who's, who um, have specific skills that fit into the specific roles. Um, your first question was how people stick together. Well, I think one thing that I realized or learned and started em em employing was this idea of making sure that everybody knows that they can leave at any point in time <clears throat> and, and also know that they can be excluded at any point in time, not in a negative sense, but like, just, just that's a possibility that they're not like, like forcefully bound to anyone. And I, as I started, work, oh, as we started working like that, we noticed that people actually do the opposite. They try to maintain relationships much more and proactively seek pro-social kind of projects and relationships. And one, one metric I think that, that was very unusual, but I started noticing is that people started telling each other that they like working with each other mm -hmm. a lot more. Nice. It became kind of a thing that people said like, Hey, I like working with you in order to set the expectation and, and actually kind of signal that they don't want that relationship to disappear. And <clears throat> that was very nice to see. It was, it, it still binds the community together. And there's, there's a few other things. There's also really great social science research on why people are friends and why they stick together in communities, why they work together, why they trust each other. I think one of the key or this like kind of two interesting or probably very important components to trust in collaboration, which is the alignment on certain values and an idea of the world that we want to live in and the evidence of past performance. So both of both of these factors play a huge role in any even corporate partnerships when <clears throat> when organizations are aligned and and the population or you know like even 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 friends mm -hmm. when you know that the other person goes in the same direction it's like okay cool maybe we should work together and if you also know what they're good at and what their you know track record is of creating past work you're like oh cool this is a complementary skill to what i can do so let's work together on things and <clears throat> this definitely significantly increases trust and the cohesion of the community so i think there's maybe like a handful I don't know. I, I couldn't count them. There's definitely a few people who decided that this, that deep work is not an environment that they want to participate in. And that's completely fine because that it should be their choice and their freedom to decide to go somewhere else because, you know, maybe they're not aligned on the values. Maybe they're not aligned on the processes. That's also another reason for why, <clears throat> why we have to, or like why we're so transparent with the processes. It's just to see and show people like this is, this is what's expected. Like, this is the actual work. This is how we work. And if this is too much for you for two days, then that's fine. And probably you need something different. Mm -hmm. And if you want to create something new, well, maybe we don't have something. Let's work on something that you want to contribute with. And so often I have conversations with people who are like, I have an idea. Maybe we can try this thing and maybe we can create this event. And then we have conversations and try to shape something new that fits that person <clears throat> that can then, when it, becomes part of a kind of business idea or model can be also scaled because it provides enough value for more people. 
if if necessary, if if it actually does. So, and it's all it's all obviously like a work in progress. But that's I would say probably in a nutshell the answer. I I still I'm I'm still happy with every single person I worked with, and I still I don't know maybe don't talk regularly to every single one of them. Maybe like again like a handful. I don't have a lot of contact anymore. But with many, <clears throat> still on a very rec- the most on a regular basis, and mm. some people have left also for a year and then came back later yeah. and started like, hey, I, I want to do some work again. Nice. I had a break, and and I want to you know help out and like let's let's do something cool, and that's also always very exciting. Yes, yes, super. Thanks for sharing. Um, then the kind of clients you're most interested uh, to work with, um, you can give me like very abstract highlights or uh, where you're heading towards. Yeah, I, so also with, with regard to what I said about trust, I get more and more to the direction of wanting and actually making decisions to work together with people and clients who are value aligned. So who are interested in creating actual use cases and, or let's say real world, solving real world problems <clears throat> where the problems excite them, they motivate them. I do look at people's past performance and their like track records so of what they have worked on. There have been a few projects we worked on where that was not really clear. And then that it just ended up a more kind of stressful collaboration because they had not a lot of experience with being kind of a founder or even working with an external party. And that's always, that requires then more work on our side. <clears throat> and sometimes it's just more stressful. But for the for most teams, they're just really nice. And I because we have a lot of collaborative sessions, it helps us to get actually aligned and, and figure out how we can work together to, to, to a more sustainable economy. So far, and so for the last five years, I think we mo- worked mostly on, on DeFi projects, although there were also several projects that were in the range of like AI or in specifically <clears throat> with community building applications. So something like source cred, it ended up shutting down, but uh, it was a really nice uh, project or, or colony was also one example that I really enjoyed. So I'm personally very interested in any type of software that supports a more healthy way people can live and organize together. So that's just my, I guess, personal interest. But our designers worked on on all kinds of different things. And also uh, with regard to brand, that was also very diverse. So Mm -hmm. we worked for for projects like Maker, but also for like Bitcoin, uh, I think Bitcoin layer twos or um, yeah, obviously DeFi products too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So these are the general um, projects. In terms of the stage, we worked with mostly, I, I personally work with either early stage teams that are kind of like looking into scaling and growing, whether that's through investment or bootstrapping. I think all options are possible. And if the narrative is right and if the user and market research is adequate, then in most cases, I don't even think they need a lot of external external investment. <clears throat> it, it's just always possible to, to find other ways or bootstrap or, or work. Um, and, and then product, obviously, when there's already a concept, usually when it's already more or less validated that there is a substantial need and, and there has been some experimentation with a mm-hmm. with a either no code environment or service and then the product just visualizes in a delightful user experience what is already like happening, but just makes it more accessible. And then at a little bit later stage or at a wider growth and like when they already have a broader community, branding work is also very fun and enjoyable to to work on because it kind of like recalibrates everybody on the core mission and also actually like helps create a visual representation of what the brand is and connect and how it connects to the audience. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's kind of, in a, in a nutshell, the yeah, no, stages. That's, that's really exciting because it feels like you're uh, tapping into um, some of the very important grounds in our world and uh, 
what excites you the most now in terms of technologies and solutions? As you said, real world um, problems are being solved. Um, can you give examples of such problems that you are excited to be solved by any product that is working on now or any future one? I think what I'm mostly excited about is that in general, it seems like the technological innovation is so fast that it's hard to imagine that, well, <clears throat> it almost seems like everything is possible and we actually just need to create, or not create, but um, articulate more specifically the problems that we can see. So the, and, and, and just be very specific about what problems we see. So I think like one of the most kind of fun and probably very relatable problems that I see in society is the dating space, like how people, men and women, or men, men, women, women, whatever, meet and actually date is changing. And there has been, there have been a lot of applications for that, that had supported a specific, specific social dynamic and it worked for a while. Now they become less and less profitable because it also ruins relationships and doesn't actually uh, contribute to long-term sustainable relationship weaving. But that is the behavior of people is changing and people want to have more, yeah, more pro-social relationships, more authentic relationships, more honest and, and find people who are also more aligned and, and stop playing games and actually kind of be more truthful when they meet each other. And <clears throat> that's something that I think it's, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity space and I don't think it's hard to, to, to design for that. So that's why I'm actually quite excited about that because the solutions are all there. Like there are people who are really good at meeting each other and, and establishing relationships. I mean, we're all getting better. We find strategies for that. Like we find ways of using new third spaces. We find ways of talking to each other. We find ways of like, <clears throat> 